Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hash Raptor YouTube channel. I just wanted to put together a quick video on how to mine directly to NiceHash, so the NiceHash pool, using Hive OS. And there's a few reasons you might want to do this, and if you attempt to, as Hive OS has been updated, there's been some changes that have taken place that make you stumble around just a little bit, but it's actually pretty easy and I'm just going to walk you through it. Now, the question comes up, why would you want to mine to NiceHash? There's some folks who were mining to NiceHash a couple of years ago when they got hacked and the balance was stolen and they're still a little bit bitter about that. I get it. I was not one of those people at the time. And I've been mining to NiceHash over the years and, and really just had a lot of luck with it. Now, like me, I've been mining Beam and I'm switching over some rigs to mine some other coins. And every now and then I come out to what to mine just to get ideas. It's great to kind of see what's on the move. And again, just to get some ideas about, about what I might want to do next. And every now and then you run a query here, you run a calculation and you see some really wacky results. Like something is just taking off, maybe a contract is taken off, or heck, maybe just the calculation is off. But, but it's enough for you to want to investigate and maybe do some mining on and try to take advantage of if you can. And in this case, I actually was considering moving some rigs back over to F, and I saw that this nice hash entry had spiked, and it actually had done it earlier in the day as well uh, before it went back to normal. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but that's besides the point. And there's other reasons you may want to mine a nice hash. So for example, for me, I'm always testing lots of different algorithms, either for videos or just out of curiosity like you guys and want to see what the cards can do and what different rigs can do. And what ends up happening for me is I mine to different pools, I mine different algorithms, and I have hash rates scattered all over the web and I, I'm just losing money and I just kind of want to consolidate wherever I can. So it's helpful for me when possible to mine and test those algorithms in one pool and I just have it all consolidated. Just, just I don't have to worry about lost hash rate and I get paid out in BTC, which is pretty simple and convenient for me. And also, you know, NiceHash does have a pretty decent user interface for tracking what your rigs are doing and tracking your payouts. Another thing I really like is being able to withdraw my funds directly to Coinbase with no fees or anything like that and it's just very frictionless. I can mine, uh, I can test all these different algorithms, I don't really have to worry about gathering up wallets and sending it to exchanges. Uh, it's just I mine and then boom it goes straight to Coinbase for me. And that's pretty handy for tax purposes, just for simplicity. Uh, and peace of mind and not not feeling like I've got coins scattered all over the place. So lots of different reasons. I'm sure you guys can think of some that you would want to or maybe some as to why you wouldn't want to. But in the past what we would do is we would come out to this stratum generator and this is still handy from time to time and I'll leave this link in the show notes. And what you would do is just tell it what algorithm it is that you're wanting to mine and select the closest location. So for me, I'm selecting a US stratum and you generate that address. And it gives you this right here that you can use to copy into whatever miner it is that you're wanting to mine to. But now a lot of this we don't have to do. A lot of this is now built into Hive. It can just be a little bit quirky to find. So let's say I want to get started from scratch. The first thing I need to do is I'm gonna come up to my farm and I'm gonna to go to my wallets and we need to create a new wallet. And we're gonna hit the add wallet button. Now this is where if you haven't walked through this and it just gets a little bit tricky on how a hive is laid out to get this set up, but it's actually pretty simple and I'll show you how to do this. So for coin type, I'm not mining a specific coin because I'm getting paid out in Bitcoin. So maybe what hive is looking for is a specific algorithm that's associated with the coin. And if you were to just scroll through here, you would not find anything that makes sense. Or you could just grab a coin, let's say Bitcoin Gold uh, or ETH that is associated with the Dagger Hashimoto ETH hash algorithm in NiceHash. But really what you need to do 
is start typing nice hash and you're going to get a different list that shows up that's not there when you scroll through it unless you already have one of these set up now keep in mind we're just in the wallet right here and if I select any of these I'm gonna get the same wallet set up and I'll show you what I mean so I'm just gonna select nice hash beam v3 since that's been a topic lately and as soon as I select that the wallet window changes and I get this notice it says you can use this wallet for all nice hash coins and algorithms so not just beam v3 it's for all of them and the reason for that is because your your mining address is a BTC mining address that is paid out by NiceHash. So here are all the algorithms that they list out, for example, that you can mine and you could use it on this wallet. So this one wallet would work for all of these. So what you're going to do is come back over to NiceHash and in the mining tab you're going to see this button and it's going to give you your mining address you're just going to click on that and copy your BTC address and you're going to come back into Hive OS and you're going to paste that right here so I'm just going to type something random because I already have my wallet set up so we've pasted our BTC address in here and we're going to name this and we can name it anything we want I'm, I'm going to call it NH nice hash BTC wallet for all algos and you don't need to worry about the source right now what you do want to do is save this as a global wallet and we're not going to select fetch wallet balance and it says it's in beta this can be a little finicky from time to time when you're trying to get an API key from nice hash so we're just gonna leave this turned off for now and it's not it's not really what we're wanting to do anyway so we're gonna hit create and I'm gonna cancel because I already have one set up and when you hit create you're gonna get a wallet listed out right here just like I've got and that's gonna make it available so that when you go to set up a flight sheet which is where you configure the algorithm the pool information the minor information the wallet will be available and you can see it in there so now that we've got our wallet set up let's come over to flight sheets and for coin this is a stumbling block as well if you notice here the only reason I have nice hash F hash showing in this list is because I have already set it up before I set this up this was not showing so if I were to just scroll down through here and try to select a coin or an algorithm just like in the wallets uh, I wouldn't see anything for nice hash and that gets a little confusing because you might say well I'm wanting to do F hash so I select F and then by the time you get down to pools nice hash doesn't show up in the pool so what you need to do is just start typing nice hash and all of the algorithms that are available will pop up so for example I had set up F earlier so let's set up beam v3 now uh, again that's been the topic of late with the algorithm change so maybe I want to wait and see if it spikes again one day and maybe I'll switch over and, and mine that for a couple days now I'm instead of adding a wallet if we had not done this step back here and created the wallet I actually could just hit this button right here and add a new wallet but we already have created that wallet so I'm gonna hit this drop down and it's only gonna show me wallets that are available to work with this algorithm right here so I'm going to select my nice hash BTC wallet address and for pool when I drop this down notice that it's already giving me nice hash set up and when I get this screen I want to select my closest pool so I get the lowest latency in my mining but then I'm also going to set a backup pool I'm going to click on Europe and have that be my backup pool as well so I'm going to apply that And in the miner, this is where you want to pick which miner you prefer. Maybe you want to do some research on what the hash rate has looked like or what the dev fee is because you still pay that dev fee. And I've heard some good things recently about Mini Z. So I'm going to select that. It only works for NVIDIA. Click on that. And I'm going to enter the name of this flight sheet. So for me, I'm going to call it Nice Hash beam v3 and again you can name this whatever you want I just name it 
something that is telling to me so that when I see the flight sheet on my worker, I kind of know what I've got set up. So nice ash beam V3. I know I'm mining the nice ash using the beam V3 algorithm and I'm gonna say mini Z. So I know which miner I had set up. Now you could leave that off in case you wanna experiment and come in here and change miners. That way you don't have to change the name every time. So you can name this whatever you want. Now I'm going to create the flight sheet and there we go. We now have our nice hash beam V3 algo available for mining. And I'm gonna put a little star beside this, a favorite it so that I'll have it available. And you can see now I can mine to F or beam V3. So maybe I am one of the folks that likes to wake up with their cup of coffee in the morning and see what's at the top of the list. Maybe it's Kapow, maybe it's beam, maybe it's F. And I just go ahead and set these flight sheets up in here so I could switch every day or every week or something like that, which is a little bit much, but hey, you know, <laughs> maybe that's what you wanna do. Or maybe you just mine, let's say for a week, that may not be so difficult. You mine for a week, you've got your overclock set the way you want them, and then you come back in a week later and you switch over to something else. That, that's a little bit more reasonable. Now while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and point out that you can see what the miner is that's set up with the flight sheet, and I can also see how many rigs are already using that flight sheet. So you can see I had already assigned one to this flight sheet right here. Now, if I want a rig to start working with that flight sheet and start mining on it, let's come over here to my 1060 rig. What I'm gonna do once I'm inside the worker is I'm gonna go to flight sheet and I'm gonna come down and select this new Beam V3 flight sheet that we created. It's gonna mine two nice hash and it's gonna use mini Z and it's gonna collect all that hash in our nice hash wallet. So let's go ahead and hit this rocket that's gonna implement this flight sheet. And this is gonna take it a minute to switch miners to start collecting hash rate and start reflecting results here in the GUI, in the web interface. If I was impatient or if I suspect there's an error, see what's going on with the miner, I can just click on this IP right here and when I do that, it reminds me that this is not a private connection. And in Windows, I just hit this advanced button and proceed. And this takes me into shell in a box and the default login is user and the default password is one. And this brings me to the Hive command line for this particular miner or this particular rig, I should say. So I'm going to type miner, which is gonna show me the running miner screen. Now keep in mind, you don't have to do this. This is just if you wanna see what's going on with the miner, if you suspect that there's errors and you want some more details, um, this is what you would do to hop in here. So we've got mini Z up version 1.6 V3. And we can see that all of our 1060s are up and mining and it's looking pretty good. Now again, if I'm impatient a little bit, if I hit this refresh button, it'll start grabbing some stats here. I have mine set to auto refresh every 30 seconds, or you can just hit this button. Or if you see anything that just doesn't look right in Hive, keep in mind, this is just a web interface. That's all this is. So it may be best for you just hit that refresh button up here. If you see some things that, before you start troubleshooting or going crazy, uh, hit that refresh button and make sure that everything looks right to you. And now that I'm in Hive, you know, I can come in and manage my overclock settings for this rig. These are just some of the advantages. Some of the things that are difficult in nice hash OS to optimize these cards and be able to get the, the most out of them. Okay, so now that we're seeing some stats here, let's go switch over to nice hash and see if the rig is showing up. And there we go. Look at that. We have got our 1060 rig. And notice that it says it's unmanaged, which means that you're not using NiceHash software. You're not using the NiceHash miner. You're not using NiceHash OS. This is an unmanaged rig, which is fine because the management capabilities is not, you don't get a whole lot. You get a stop and start button and a low, medium, high setting, which might be okay for novice users, but more advanced users are gonna want more than that. And we've been waiting on NiceHash to launch some of those 
hive like features in here to let us at least manage the overclocks the fan speed and so forth here from this web interface but since it's not there maybe we want to use something like hive os so you can see my unmanaged 1060 rig is here and now all that hash rate is going to get dropped into this bucket and it's going to get converted no matter what it is i'm mining whether it's beam whether it's Ethereum, it doesn't matter. It's all gonna get converted and dropped into this one bucket right here and paid out as BTC. And you know, another reason that you may wanna do this is there's, there really is no way to mine Bitcoin with GPUs. And maybe that's really what you're wanting to do is, is accumulate as much Bitcoin as you can. And perhaps the difficulty on Bitcoin drops for a period of time or the price is low enough that you're wanting to accumulate for another run up you know, whatever the reason, this is another good reason to use nice hash right here. And then what I do personally is once I hit about $100 on my balance, that's when I do a withdrawal, which just makes it easier for end of the year accounting and tax purposes. So I'm not withdrawing every single day and creating a lot of records. I just do it, you know, maybe that's once every couple of days or a week or something like that. I did want to show you one other thing. The one reason I do like using NiceHash OS is because it's the only Linux based operating system that I've used that allows you to algo switch based on profitability to where it goes ahead and it switches these algorithms based on what is most profitable at the time. And NiceHash OS allows you in the JSON file to customize the overclocks for each of your cards. And again, I do have an overclocking video on NiceHash, but again, today we're talking about Hive OS, and you just can't do that. You can't algo switch, you can't profit switch, which is a little bit frustrating. Now, that being said, I was Googling around and I stumbled upon an older video. I wanted to show you this. And it's called Auto Switch for NiceHash. And I just wanted to check with any, maybe of the more advanced users that are out there and see if anybody had tried this. Now, I'm not condoning this. I'm not recommending this. I'm not saying whether this is bad or good. I have literally never used this, but there is a YouTube video that accompanies it. And it talks about basically what you do is you go and install a little bit of this core code from a GitHub account. and. Uh, I am not a developer. I have not interrogated that code. I don't know whether it's good, it's bad, indifferent. I don't know anything about it. I'm just pointing this out to see if anyone has tried this before. I'm, I'm really curious if somebody has. And basically what it is is within each of your Hive rigs, you install this little bit of code from GitHub and you set up all of your algorithms that you want to mine to. And once you do that, you run this auto switch application. And what it does is in effect, it turns Hive OS into a profit switcher. Now, I don't know if this works. I don't know if it did work when it was first posted, I think back in 2018, and it's been broken since then. I don't, I don't know any of that, but I'm curious if anybody has tried this or if you have any good recommendations for profit switching on the Linux side of the house, do let me know. That's something I'm really interested in learning a bit more about because for now, I'm doing that through NiceHash OS, which on my 7x1660 Ti rig, it's working really great. It's working really, really well for me right now. And uh, aside from having to go pull a USB every time I want to edit the JSON file to adjust overclocks or something like that. Look at that. Uh, just switched over. Just switched over to Beam V3 on looks like four of the cards four of those. And I have one, one 1660Ti that benchmarked when I was doing troubleshooting. I had to put in a new riser and it caused it to benchmark. So I lost the overclock settings. So I've got to go pull that USB drive and put in the overclock settings for this one card. But, um, but yeah, okay, I'll stop there before this runs too much longer, guys. That is how you get up and running on NiceHash using Hive OS. And if you've got any questions, leave it in the comments below and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye bye. Big, warm, fuzzy, secret heart Code monkey like you